Today on the interview, we talk with Jacob Anderson about the upcoming multiplayer online game Heroes and Generals. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of The Interview with Q. I'm your host, Q. This week we're talking with Jacob Anderson about the all-new game Heroes and Generals. Welcome to the interview. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, great. Um, thank you for being on with us. No problem. It's my pleasure. So, you guys uh, are working on um, this brand new game, um, but before we get started actually talking about the game, if you don't mind, um, could you give us kind of a, a history of the uh, your guys' studio? Yeah, yeah, we are an independent studio located in uh, Copenhagen. We have been running for a few years now, uh, building it up from, from the bottom. Uh, most of the guys here are, uh, have been involved in uh, the creation of the Hitman franchise and the uh, Freedom Fighters games for Iron Interactive, which was released by Eidos. And have a, most of us have a, like a long, long history in, 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 in games creation. And... Uh, we just thought that it would, it would a few years ago, it would be nice to to try and do something different than the usual console type games, and want to get into this uh, online marketplace that for us offers a, a, like some some more exciting ways to to work with games. Sure. So you guys um, you guys are a team kind of coming out of uh, coming out of another uh, studio and creating your own just to kind of get started independently. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, awesome. So, so uh, is this you guys' first uh, release as a studio? Uh, yes. Yes, you'd say that. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, Heroes and, and Generals, is a it's a multiplayer online game. It's kind of a combination, kind of, of uh, at least from what I've seen, of um, FPS and, and RTS. Um, but if you... Why don't you kind of? You're probably way better off suited in explaining what it is. Can you kind of give uh, give our <laughs> yeah. viewers yeah, kind of yeah. or listeners kind of what it, what it, it is overall? Well, Heroes and Generals is is, is first and foremost a, a, a team based uh, first person shooter uh, combat game where you can uh, play as a soldier uh, and you can uh, drive tanks and uh, uh, fly airplanes and, and all that stuff you know from, from games like Battlefield and, and Call of Duty. Uh, we've put a lot of emphasis on, on, on like team play, which we think there's, there's, there's a little bit of a lack in, 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 in the market of, of, of really good like team play uh, games. Like this, uh, but the, the, uh, the, the premise of the game is, is that it's, it's a first-person shooter action game on top of that, we have we have a what you would call a strategic game. It's not to be uh, be uh, be said as as we're not trying to combine combine two different genres of of, of games. Like we're not trying to do an, an, a real time strategy game on top of an and, and uh, uh, action game alongside it. It's it's you should see it as as an extension of the of the action game. It's where the the uh, the action game makes makes sense instead of you have uh, instances where you just battle out and you you record your individual statistics and you you you, you rank up and then on to the next battle. Uh, we we tie together all the different battles into a, a huge campaign. So so you have a sort of like a, a, a meta game on uh, lay on top of the of the action game. So which is why we say that it actually makes sense what you do in in, in each each in uh, each each ac- each action game. If you, if you win or lose that, that actually makes makes a, a difference in, in the in, in the grand war, and that's sort of like the the uh, the premise of it. It's 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 more like a the strategic game is an extension for advanced action players who want to do more than just run around and and, and shoot. Um, the game is is uh, web based in the sense that it's uh, the, the the strategic part and the the uh, the whole preparation of of, of battles and uh, equipment uh, preparations and, and and all that stuff is 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 uh, runs in the web browser uh, and the action game is also delivered via the action uh, the um, the web browser, which means that that the updates and 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 uh, for example new graphics or uh, new, uh, new, new level level uh, parts will be streamed from the uh, from the server via the the uh, the web browser. So it's 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 a 
it's not a hundred percent web browser based, but it's it's like what do you say fifty percent based on on a web browser. The actual action game runs obviously on 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 a client because you would get way better performance on a on a three D game than running it through the browser. It makes no sense. You you need to download the whole code anyway. So that's the uh, <laughs> I guess that's the rough <laughs> outline of the sure. game. I'm trying to make it simple because, it, but but it's, it, it, it basically it is a very simple game. It just has a, a lot of possibilities. Yeah, it sounds really it sounds really cool because it, it it would seem and feels like it would be an actual war you're fighting in because the uh, strategy aspect it, and like you said the um, the individual battles that you fight make a difference. So it seems like you yeah. guys what you guys have created is a real war simulator not just a, a first person shooting simulator but a simulator that kind of almost simulates the whole war instead of just the individual battles that's true that's true and it's it's on the same time we're trying it to to make it as 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 easily accessible as possible uh, which is kind of like a, that's that's my maybe the, the the hard part of doing the, this type of game is is to have it Easily accessible, so you can actually just jump in and, 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 and run around and, and, and play it without having to worry too much about the the, the, the complicated uh, strategy part behind it. Uh, so that, that's that's why we, we, we it's sort of like a, a more loosely based uh, strategy part. It's not that you you would not lock down your individual soldiers in in, in certain areas of of the map. For example, because then you would probably never be able to play the <laughs> soldier <laughs> because you'd just be stuck guarding something somewhere. So we we, we take a certain uh, uh, degree of, of liberty in in the in in in, the, in that area, uh, but only only with the purpose of, of of actually making it fun to play. So, in as far as like the setting goes, this is a uh, World War II um, setting, right? Yeah. That's true. It is okay. So you're you're um, fighting you fighting across uh, Europe in World War Two, and we yeah we picked the northern Europe, uh, northern Western Europe as, as our starting point uh, because that's sort of like a well known <laughs> part of the war mm-hmm. and where you you can introduce uh, American soldiers to to the to the battlefield and so we thought that was, and, and obviously time wise we, we we chose to to go pretty late because that's what that's where the most interesting equipment was available. So that, that's that's we were sort of like working a little bit backwards here. We're starting out with the tiger tanks and the and the, the cool machine guns, and then we go backwards and introducing the like <laughs> the earlier and earlier equipment, and then uh, that should tie into the uh, the progression at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys are going to have um, obviously uh, the battles that you can jump into and help out your. Uh, your team and your um, and the war itself are, is the is there going to be times when the wars actually end and reset, or are you just going to kind of have a continued yeah. war? Uh, right now, we 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 have a strategy game that is is fairly imbalanced, so the war ends very quickly. If you are up against some of our players, are, are really good at, at at figuring out how to 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 play the, uh, the strategy game. So you 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 can't go. It will have, well. It will last in right now. We're thinking one or two days for for a war. Mm-hmm. We would obviously like to to get that extended into a longer period, uh, but that that requires some more uh, tweaking of the game and of obviously some more features that we're working on. But it, it, I'd say that it, it it makes sense to have a goal in the game and not just an uh, one continuously uh, long campaign because then you sort of like lose the. The initiative or the the incitement uh, to, to to actually do something because then it, it doesn't really matter in the end if the war just goes on and on and on then obviously it doesn't really have any any effect what to do so we, we need to we need to have a win criteria we need to have uh, it, it, the possibility for each side to actually win the war and start over and that then in that way it's also good because you you uh, the, the the commanders and the, the the guys that are more interested in the actual strategic part of the game can try out different tactics and, and different strategies and uh, so I think it's that's uh, obviously that that's that, that's a good thing okay cool so the people that are um, kind of playing with the strategic side of it um, and then the obviously the people that are hardcore gamers that want to do both um, are they going to be able to affect the gameplay for the first person shooters are they going to be able to help out with them and stuff yeah yeah, it's it's uh, obviously it's, it's 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 again it's a balancing thing. The the uh, the actual game design is deliberately imbalanced 
because you, you need to do that. You need to have uh, as commanders setting up defenses if they want to make sure that the attackers don't break, break through in a certain area. And the, uh, the attacking uh, commanders, their job is actually to probe and find weaknesses in, in, a, in the defense line and then attack there where they have the advantage, which is the, the, the whole essence of, 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 of finding the imbalances in the, in the game. We're to, taking certain measures to make sure that, that it's, not getting, it's, not, it's not getting too imbalanced and it, it's possible for, for the, the, you see, the, the underdog to actually recover from a, a, an attack that's, that's uh, overwhelming, which is done by, by moving resources and moving, for example, new tanks into a, into a battle where they're needed. And so you can actually you can, you can, uh, take, you can move uh, soldiers and, and, and uh, tanks and planes in and out of, of ongoing battles to try and and and, and uh, tip the, the the scales if you know what i mean yeah uh, on top of that the, the commanders have the possibility of uh, configuring the, uh, the, the we call them assault teams but they, in reality they're, they're small uh, battle groups and they 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 they, uh, they can mix and match what they think would be a good uh, attack strategy for example if you have a you can you, you you would see that that one town is defended uh, by tanks, for example. Then it makes sense to to try and counter it with some some anti-tank uh, uh, infantry, for example. So so there's uh, some some strategy in it or some tactics in it from for the commanders to actually try and counter what what the enemy has, is putting up with, and he can do that by by choosing what to attack with. So so working with the. Uh the people that are playing both FPS and then, of course, the commanders and those playing the strategic version, having them work together is kind of key because then you have the commanders um, setting up that strategy aspect of it and then the players kind of carrying it out, they're playing FPS. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, the, um, the strategy players, the, whenever they initiate a battle, that battle will be solved on, the, on our war server, it's like a server-side uh, solving that takes place of the, of the actual battle until enough uh, human players have joined to sort of like take over the solving of the of the battle, and that's where it gets really interesting because that's where you can make a a, a, a big difference as as a human player because the 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 war solver is is, is purely based on on uh, statistics and and, uh, and and how many men do you move to 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 a battlefield, and if you are good at a uh, if you're a good commander and can sort of like assemble a team of, of of skilled players, you will definitely have an advantage by just being good at playing the game. Cool. Um, it, uh... should, that, 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 that feature, that, that part of the game should appeal a lot to like, uh, people who like to play in clans and stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be perfect for getting, getting people together and, and having squads and stuff. Um, exactly. And as far as the, the uh, first-person shooting gameplay goes, is there going to be different classes of people you can use as far as infantry and stuff goes? Yeah, we, we, we have a sort of like a, a, a little bit of a loosely based class system. We're not, we don't have a, cl- a class that's called, for example, machine gun. Or, or, uh, we, we have a, a class that's uh, the army infantryman. And that, that, that figure will, will be able to join in any infantry uh, as assault teams. And, and the players can sort of like configure him the way they like. If they want to join in with a rifle, that's okay. If they want to join in with a submachine gun, that they can do that. If they want to join with the machine gun, for example, then they can equip the machine gun on their, their character. And if there's, a, if there's a machine gun slot free when they, when they join the battle, obviously they, they, can, they can join that slot. We have to put in a few restrictions to, to not uh, skew the, the balance totally. Everybody knows that machine guns are more powerful than, than a rifle. So there will be a limit on, on the most powerful weapons per squad, if you say so. Sure. But, but, uh, but the players can. It's not that they don't need two, two characters to be able to play rifleman and machine gunner. They, they, they can have one character and it's just a selection of weapons and equipment. They can re-equip the, the character. Cool. So, um, and kind of to go along with that, is it going to, are you going to be able to, um, I don't know if you would call it level up, but I mean, like, get, are you going to be able to better your character by different... Yeah, um, yeah, 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 exactly. You, 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 there were, there's several layers of, 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 uh, of sorry, what, what you call level, leveling up. We have, uh, first and foremost, just our basic uh, statistics that you, your skills, what you, you, you shoot uh, 10 times and uh, then you get your, uh, like a little ribbon for, uh, for shooting the, the rifle 10 times. And when you've shot it 20 times, you get a little star on, on the ribbon. And that sort of like indicates how good you are at one particular thing in, in, in the action game. These different ribbons 
in, they, they in combination uh, they they uh, they earn the player something we call combat badges, which is uh, sort of like a perk where you you get a badge for for uh, for maybe shooting the bazooka and 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 and. Uh, and driving a car or whatever, and, and in combination they do that. They 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 give you a combat badge that when you uh, when you wear that badge in, in 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 battle, you are slightly better at something. When you hop into a tank, for example, and you have your tanker badge on, then then the tank will start slightly faster, for example. So it it gives the player a, a little bit of an advantage advantage of of uh, when he uses those badges. Obviously, the badges, the um, number of badges that you can wear are, are very limited, and a normal player will only be able to wear one. And advanced players will will have the possibility later later to to wear two badges at the same time, so they can combine it with the, for example, a particular weapon that they choose. So it's not you're not going to get into the overpowered super player where he just wears everything. You have to sort of like make your decision of 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 what kind of playing style that you want to use your character for. On top of that, we have a ranking system which is more commonly uh, known as as like a, it should it should reflect. So, like, what level are you if you compare to an MMO type game? It's it's, it's just purely a a, a, a combination of of, uh, of your other stats, releasing uh, experience points, and the, and then you just level up through the ranks of of, uh, of the soldier classes, not the soldier from uh, from being a private to the uh, I think it's the captain or something that we have as the highest commanding or the highest action rank as as, as we have it now. The characters, uh, we, we stopped the, 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 the rank fairly low because it doesn't make sense for us when we have a strategic part as well to have a, a field marshal or something running around uh, with a machine gun on the battlefield. So we stopped the, uh, the, the ranking fairly low, I'd say, about, uh, about the, uh, the uh, first sergeant or something like that. Uh, to make it more realistic, if you, if you want to go higher in rank, you, you will need to convert your character into commander. And start uh, using him as uh, on the strategic part of the game. Um, I think that that uh, <laughs> there's been great discussions about this stuff, and it, it, it it's something that is it's a bit dangerous for us to go into this area because usually, when you see it from a, a, when you see all all other war games, you you players seems to be used to having like a, a hundred levels to level up through, and we're going to present them with, with ten <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> Because there simply aren't, aren't uh, more levels, uh, more more ranks in, in the army, and we, we would we would like to keep that kind of realism that, that, that we are not going to invent new ranks, new military ranks just for the sake of having more levels. We're just going to try and then present it in, in another way. And, and another note is that the uh, the rank system also is is uh, directly uh, tied to our um, uh, income system. Where you actually, have you, as as you play the game, you earn credits in the game, and you, the rank gives you. Uh, it, it's 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 as it would be as, as it is in in a regular army. It's it's also a pay grade type system where the higher rank you are, the more money you actually earn from from battles. So uh, we use that as well as as a as a as a key element. More yeah. experienced players will earn more credits. And On top of that, we have another functionality that you uh, as a commander. Of the uh, small teams, can you can raise the uh, the minimum level that you want to have. If if you have an, a assault squad of like six players, uh, you want to attack something, and you say this is important for me as a commander that I actually win this battle, then you you would be able to uh, to increase the ra- the minimum rank of of those uh, six spawn slots. Say I need only sergeants here in, in my assault team, but that as a commander would actually cost you the the salary of those six sergeants. So we have sort of like a balance. If if you want to up up power your uh, your 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 salt squad, you also have to to pay, to pay the salary of the of the players uh, playing. <laughs> oh, that's really so it, it that's goes really, both ways. Yeah, that's really cool. There's a lot of interesting um, little things in there that sound really exciting and, and make it seem more realistic. Um, yeah. And um, let's see. I had another question on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember what it was. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as the um, uh, cost goes. I mean, I've I've looked up on your site. Are you guys going to be using like a free to play type model? Yes, we are definitely going to into a free to play type uh, game. But obviously, we are very focused on the uh, trying to avoid uh, the usual 
uh, criticism you will get from free to play is that it's like a pay to win type system. So that's why we're very focused on, on all this stuff with the pay grades on ranks and then and, and good players earning more and all that stuff. So 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 we we put a lot of, of, of effort into rewarding uh, good players. Cool. So uh, you, essentially, um, like the free to play, would that be to earn um, in game um, money per se to add on to perks and for weapons and stuff like that? Yes, that's true. Uh, you you should be able to play the game uh, fairly far on a, on a free to play basis, uh, where you just you, you jump in, you you run around, you shoot, and you you earn your your credits, and and you can buy new equipment and or modify your weapon, and you can do all sorts of, of things. Obviously, you cannot do everything. For free, you have to if you if you want to play the game as a completely free to play player where you where you never put in a, <laughs> a cent, <laughs> then, then then obviously you would have to sort of like choose a very narrow path. I will only be a sniper guy. I will only be a, the tank guy, whatever. So and and, and I think that's that's uh, that 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 might that that's fair. I think it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not just obviously we need to make money on the game as well, so we're not just going to give everything away. But definitely, we see a, a value in in free players actually playing our game because that adds value to the other players as well as some, somebody to play with. So we're trying to to, to sort of like uh, see if we can we can uh, change the free to play model a bit into more like a so we call it like a social free to play thing where you you can see the the benefits of uh, the, the paying players can see benefits of of maybe using the the, the free to play players for for certain things. Uh, there's lots of, of, of suggestions on, on on how to how to try and and and, and make that uh, bridge that that gap between the the two. Obviously, there's there's two types of players here. Sure, that's that's uh, that's cool. I mean, I like the I do like the free to play model. A lot. It's it works well for a lot of different things. I think it'll work really cool for this because then you'll have people that are that'll be playing it, and then once they get to the point where they want to be able to pay for it and get the extra stuff, they'll be able to. And then also yeah. the players that are paying for the extra stuff will have more infantry and more people that are playing the game to get involved with the game, anyways. Yeah, and one thing I'm I'm really happy with that we. That we 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 we're working on is this the social uh, aspect of it that you actually uh, st- a lot of the stuff that you can buy actually benefits other players. So you don't always just buy sh- uh, stuff for yourself. You buy it for your team, which makes a huge difference in in, in how it's perceived as being a a, a, a pay to win type game. You can almost see it's like it's, it's a, a clan might go in and, and pool some money and buy an assault team, and then they'll set the the ranking uh, so so they can play together. Which I would assume they would think that that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, it sounds really, it sounds really um, inventive and really cool to me. Uh, I remember, I remember my, what my other question was going to be. <laughs> 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 Finally, I was trying, I was sitting here trying to remember, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget again. Um, as far as the uh, the FPS, the battles and stuff go, uh, how many players are you going to be on each team? Like in in uh, I don't know what you'd call it in a, in a room or whatever in a specific battle. Specific battle. Right now we have 12 versus 12. Uh, we have tested the game with far more players, like uh, like 64 players or something uh, at the same time. Uh, but we we're increasing this slowly to just to keep uh, keep keep a hand with the with the server performance and all this stuff. So we it, it's definitely something where we would, I think uh, the the somewhere between 8, 48 and. and so you guys are, are planning on having a large um, amount of players in it at the same time, which is really cool to make it feel a lot more like a battle. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's that's where the these assault teams comes comes into play because the assault teams actually works as, as small squads in the game. So we have uh, naturally we have divided the players into two small groups in the first place, and not just everybody just spawning in a huge pile and, and, and doing what they like. Um, so to, so that should give. As I said before, we were very focused on, on, on having this, the, the team play work so that people are idle. It's, it's more fun to, to, to play these types of games when, when you work as a group. So um, we're, not, we're, not, we're not just optimizing to get as many riflemen in as, as, as absolutely possible. We also have a, a, another thing is that we, it, 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 each player t- t- it puts a different load on, on, the, uh, on the action servers uh, in regard to what what type of equipment they're using, for example, a, a foot soldier is uh, puts a, a, a moderate load on the on the server, and a tank puts a heavy load on, on the server because it has a lot more physics involved uh, with the tracks and everything, and, and the, 
the, the shooting and, and, and stuff. And the, an airplane, for example, is, is very light. So we, in theory, we could have a lot of, of, of fighter pilots and, and very few tanks. <laughs> so so it's, it's hard for us to set the, like a hard limit. That's why we, we're just slowly scaling up and testing when when is the combination of, of different uh, vehicles going to break the game. Sure. But everybody is obviously in the community is asking for the Battle of Kursk and the big tank battles. That seems to be what everybody was to <laughs> <laughs> would like to see in the game. <laughs> Um, so you just mentioned tanks. Um, is you're going to have uh, vehicles, obviously, but is tank the primary, or is there going to be other secondary vehicles or whatever? We have a lot of, of actually, of, uh, obviously, if you've seen the videos, we have bicycles in the game <laughs> for, for, for for transportation. We also have like the jeeps and uh, uh, and another interesting thing, we have uh, half tracks, which play actually a vital role in the it's called a mechanized infantry assault assault team. The way the, the half track works is, is it's it's sort of like a mobile spawn point. You only have one of them, but it, it gives you a, a, a if you know how to use it a fairly huge advantage in the game. In, in fact, that you can actually drive it to where you want to to spawn from it. So, uh, um, so yeah, we, we're trying to to make use of of, uh, of vehicles that are usually in in a in a in a t- typical uh, first person shooter type war game. There's a lot of of the vehicles that doesn't really make any sense uh, for example the uh, the small tanks are just small and, and not powerful and the big tanks are usually very powerful and, and will knock out in anything that comes in the path we have put a lot of inf- emphasis into into uh, making sure that the tank destroyer tanks are uh, like the hellcat we have in right now the american hellcat is a light tank that that doesn't weigh too much it has a fairly big cannon and it drives very fast so so if you know how to control the tank killer you can easily take out a tiger tanks but just out maneuvering it before you shoot so so all sorts of uh, considerations goes like that goes into the game that you actually want to use the different uh, vehicles the way they were actually uh, intended cool well it sounds like you guys have put a lot of uh, a lot of thought and um, a lot of work into the game it sounds really cool and i really uh, really looking forward to uh, watching it grow and seeing the community build around it i mean i know you guys are in an, uh, is that you guys in open beta right now or is, or is it a closed beta? no we're still we're still in a closed beta okay you're in a closed beta yeah so but i, I know that so, uh, right now we we, we we yeah we, we sorry Oh no! I was just going to say that I've I have seen um, some uh, some of the community stuff around uh, on you guys' site, I believe, and it, it looks like you guys are having a really cool, good response already, just with what you've done so far. Yeah, yeah, we we're trying to. Uh, that's another thing we're trying to involve the community as much as possible. Uh, the players are giving us uh, hints about this is good and this is bad, and some of them come with the suggestions and and just having a, a live uh, audience. To, uh, to to respond on the game and, and comment on it is, is really helps us us uh, tweak the game, and it's, it sounds corny, but we we are trying to make the game that the uh, that the players want to play because that makes sense for us as well. So so uh, obviously all of us have have backgrounds in, in traditional gaming creation where we made the Xbox and Play PlayStation games and and what you usually uh, end up doing in, 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 in that area is to, to create a game that you think the gamers would like. And if they don't particularly like it, you have to back it up with a huge pile of marketing just to make them believe that they, they want the game. And that's that's kind of like a, a bit of a letdown if you want to make a cool game that people actually like is, is that you, you, you're, not, you, you're not sure, you, you, you get the response when it's way too late. When the game is finished, then you, then you get the, the, the response if, if, if the people like the game or not. And here we have the opportunity to actually let the players play the game way, way, way early. So we have, have that. we can change stuff. We can we can we can tweak the game so they uh, so so we get we 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 create the game that they actually want to play. I think that's a great thing. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things about independent game developing because you can actually you can um, have the community and uh, uh, get feedback from the community and you're able to change what you what you decide that you don't want to have in it or you're able to listen to feedback and get things changed. Whereas with the larger scale studios and the bigger developers, like you said, they kind of make the game and, and market it and hope that everybody likes it. Yeah, yeah, and the, for for me, as I usually, uh, when I've done like four Hitman games, and and usually you 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 release the game, and then you get the criticism, and you can you can't do anything about it. Then you can try and catch up on, on that criticism for the for the for the sequel, but that's still not really good enough. It would be it would be nice if you could actually change the the the, the, the game that you put out into into something that's better. Right. So. 
it sounds sounds great and like i said i'm really looking forward to ever everybody uh once you guys get it all set and all you're all done your beta testing and you get it ready to release i, I really know everybody's gonna everybody's gonna enjoy it i've seen a lot of stuff footage for it and I've, I've actually played it a little bit so i really like it uh that's it's, cool it's, it's a lot of fun um and i uh, look forward to see where it can it can go and what you guys do with it and uh where can where can the listeners go to get more information on the game they can go to www.heroesandgenos.com and from there on you can you you will be able to access both our community site and the wiki and you can sign up for a, for a beta key and, and hopefully get into the game. We we think right now we're into a circulation where we were fairly quick on on, uh, on opening up for uh, for more players. Okay. So it's not that hopefully you, you shouldn't be be sitting around waiting for too long for the for the alpha or for the for the beta keys. But again, it, it, for us it's, it's uh, control scalability. We're making a, a, a huge thing with with these online games is obviously uh, scalability and can the servers uh, can they can they take the the, the load? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we want to be in, in some sort of control of, of how many players is, is is coming in. But obviously our next goal is to to go towards an open beta where we just set it free and let everybody join. Cool. So um, thank you very much for coming on uh, and talking with us about this awesome, awesome looking game. You guys are doing an excellent job with it so far. and I'm really looking forward to, thank you. Uh, to the release and everything that you guys have planned for in the future. Cool. Thank you. Thanks again for being on. Thank you for taking time to speak to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to work now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the interview with Q. Remember to check back every Thursday for more interviews with the developers of your favorite games. For more information on this week's game, you can go to www.heroesandgenerals.com. The interview with Q is brought to you by bagogames.com, your source for all of the latest news, reviews, previews, and any information on game you could possibly want. Check us out online at bagogames.com. That's B-A-G-O games.com. Thanks again for listening, and remember to check us out next week on the interview with Q. I'm your host, Q, signing off.